Welcome to Armstrong Street Scene. I'm Rick Guerrera, and today we have Jerry Dixie. Jerry is the former tour director of Street Rider Magazine. Welcome, well, to, well, welcome to Classic Automobilia. Well, welcome to the show, Jerry. It's Thank just you. like we're at Jerry's place today, and it's like we're back in time here with all the stuff you have. You got a nice collection here. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's about a, a 40 year. Uh, uh, collection of mm -hmm. of things that I've loved, uh, you know, in in my lifetime. I'm a car guy like you are, mm -hmm. and uh, you start to accumulate. And just a just a quick backstory of how it all came about. Uh, my wife Marianne and I started Ohio Van and Truck Supply uh, on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town, 1976, and we used this room as the seat room at the height of the van craze. We had a uh, hundred seats on display in here. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, seats and sofas and the whole thing. And I started to decorate it with things that I loved. And I started to get people that, that said, wow, where did you get that sign? And, and we, I'd like to decorate my garage. And so we ended up finding companies that made reproduction signs and neon clocks and gas pumps and things. And the, uh, the classic automobile side of it kind of overpowered the van shop in this side of the building. And uh, then we put a catalog together and uh, started started shipping items all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that's how I made my connection with Street Rider, is I suggested to the then editor of, of Street Rider magazine, Tom Vogley, I saw him at a show and, uh, and I said, gee, I ought to do an article on pedal cars. And he said, well, you ought to do the article. You know about pedal cars. I realized it was his standard, his standard uh, response to, hey, you ought to do uh, an article on Studebaker pickup trucks. I go, well, you do it. Well, uh, I did it and, uh, and took a lot of pictures, and, mm -hmm. and that's how I got connected with Street Rider. It's fun to do stuff like that, too. It's something right in your uh, category. When you, know, when, you know, when you know about it, it's yeah. not a... You well, know. you just have to study up on a lot of stuff. Just like when I do this show, I, we're going into something, and I study up on it, and then, I'm, you know, you go in there, and you're pretty well versed on it, and yeah. you know what you're doing. Yeah. You, you look smart anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but, but I, I'm sure they can, in, in post-edit, they, uh, they can make us both look smart, Oh, right? sure. Greg does yeah. that all the time for me, so <laughs> <laughs> he tries anyway. <laughs> I, I went to work for Street Rider Magazine in 1996 with the Road Tour, mm -hmm. and um, Marianne and I made the decision to sell Ohio Van in 2007, but we kept the building and we kept this side. Mm -hmm. So it's the old story of they locked up the store in 1996 and then I came back 25 years later and it was all here. And the interesting thing is I've kind of noticed that, and they say, the trends and hobbies cycle through in a 30 year cycle. Mm -hmm. That, hey, things are popular again. I don't know that crazy bell bottoms will ever come back. Yeah, but, they will, they but, are. But things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. so, so they say it cycles in 30 years and it's been 30 years mm -hmm. since we started Classic Automobilia. And all of a sudden this stuff that I kind of held on to here uh, has some value and uh, I'm kind of kicking up classic automobilia again. I don't know that we'll necessarily ever have regular business hours, but uh, you know, if somebody wants to come and, and see it, and uh, if they something that, that they would like to buy, we can work that out, classicautomobilia.com. I'll throw a plug in, is, mm -hmm. that, all right? is that all right? Sure. Classicautomobilia.com. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. How many, you, had, you had Ohio Van and what was it called? Ohio, Ohio Van and Custom? Uh, Ohio Van and Truck Supply. And truck we supply. Started. Do people still mess around with vans? Do oh, they yeah. still customize them? Well, we... we <laughs> Not as much, though. When, yeah. we, when we started yeah. back in 1976, it was uh, the era of the custom vans. Mm -hmm. Us, uh, us long hairs. Uh, yeah, yeah, in 76, yeah, I'm sorry. When all Thank the you. Were around. Yeah, yeah in, in 76. <laughs> and it, uh, as I like to say, uh, bare breasted women painted on the side of the oh, van yeah. whipping, pol <laughs> whipping polar bears, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And that was where Guy, that's where Guy Shively, the local artist, uh -huh. my good friend, came in. But uh, we went and, and did custom vans. And then it turned into family conversions with mm -hmm. the three big bay windows uh, and the four seats and a sofa. And then it went into commercial vans for the companies that are doing plumbing and heating and that sort of thing that need mm -hmm. the commercial interiors. So Tina Carson, who, who runs Ohio Van and Truck Supply now, she's still very, very busy. She does window tint, she does uh, commercial mm -hmm. stuff, the, the bed liners, the, the, the tonneau covers, oh, okay. and she keeps very busy with that mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah, it's still a viable business. Yeah. We, uh, we were fortunate that we were small and able to trans, uh, transfer into different things. Mm -hmm. We make a transition from the crazy vans to the family vans. Right. Now everybody's uh, fancying up their SUVs, you know, and yep. stuff like that. So. And you know the funny thing is, Rick, that 
and not as much here, but out in California, the old custom vans mm -hmm. are really desirable. Mm -hmm. The young, the young twenty-year-olds mm -hmm. are looking for a. Uh, I, I'll, when I when I travel and I'm out there, I'll tell them I used to own a van shop, and they go, oh, "You used to have a custom van shop." Mm -hmm. I go, "Yeah, yeah, I did." So. I remember my brother back in the days. So he's gone. Now. He's been dead for forty years. Mm -hmm. He had an old van, an old Chevy van, and he had the Grateful Dead on it. Oh, there uh, you go. Yeah, yeah, on the side, I off of one of the off of Terrapin Street, I think it was called. You yeah. remember that one? Oh. Yeah, they had painted on the side, and he had it all fixed up. And <laughs> well, they had van, they had oh, van yeah. clubs. So yeah, the, the van thing is is still strong. But uh, uh, I, this is my this is my passion mm -hmm. is is, sure, the, is, the, is the collectible stuff and the pedal cars and mm -hmm. and gas pumps and, and, and things like that. So. You know what? I think we should move around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's what you got let's, uh, let's let's take a walk. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, I'll just talk a little bit. Is that all right? <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> You're fine, Jerry. You make it so easy for me. I'll tell you. When I was a young kid, we started. I used to hang out in the gas station, and we used to have a pinball machine there. And I used to love it. We, I, I got so good at pinball, and you know, and you cheated. Oh yes, uh, oh, of yeah. course they did. Well, they they have these things, and, and you know more about it because I was never uh -huh. a, a pinball guy necessarily. Yeah. I've got this for the decor, and I think it, uh -huh. it came out great, but. They've got a, a thing that, a, a little pendulum or something yeah, that if you yeah. if you rock it, it yeah. bing, 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 and we it, used to put it on our feet and <laughs> we'd cheat like oh that. Oh my God, a oh, professional pinball. I was really pinball. good at that. And then we slid into, after the pinball, the pong. Remember uh -huh. pong? Yeah. No. Bing, bing, bing. No, I got pinballs. Good at that. Yeah. Pinballs are popular. I, I, uh -huh. I don't, I don't buy and sell a lot of pinball machines, but I, I thought this was cool, and somebody had sure. called me locally, and I had it restored, and it's mm -hmm. always got a pretty lady in the, in the background. And look, mm -hmm. they're jet pilots in this one. So, mm -hmm. uh, and our buddy Ron Robinstraw has one at his house. Yeah. And when I go over there, I uh, play his pinball as, machine. As, as and we, I kick his butt every time I play. Him, too, nah. so. Does he, does he know that you're cheating? <laughs> As, as we walk through, uh, you and, and the viewers might mm -hmm. recognize a few things, mm -hmm. even if you haven't been here. And that is because uh, our good friends Todd and Maureen from, uh, uh, from Easy Street Productions and Pump Boys mm -hmm. and Dinettes gut my showroom when they oh, do the show okay. and this is what's on the on the display or on oh, the uh, cool. stage mm -hmm. out at pump boys and dinettes down at uh, oh, down okay. at powers and mm -hmm. that's that's our okay. that's our i'm in heaven then my mm -hmm. stuff's on the stage mm -hmm. and they give me about 10 free passes for the front row yeah. so i'm a big wheel i'm a big wheel that uh, that, that let's week. go with this thing here a lot of the younger guys probably don't know what this is but this is, they use this for what, oil bulk, and kerosene? That's a bulk, that's yeah. a bulk oil dispenser. Mm -hmm. And um, what they would do is they would fill it with bulk, with oil. Mm -hmm. Not, now bulk oil has a connotation of being used oil. Right. But right. no, new oil. Mm -hmm. And then they would fill it, the glass bottles. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was actually the forerunner of, of, of you know ecological and recycling because they kept using these same glass bottles. Right. Put it here. Crank it up. It would come out here. They'd fill mm -hmm. the bottles and then take them out to the to the uh, yeah. pump site, to the right. curb site, yeah. and things. So that uh, that's that's pretty neat. Right? Uh, I've seen these. I've seen these made into. Uh, oddly enough, they'll cut the front of them out and make them into a bookshelf, mm -hmm. uh, or make them into a display case. Yeah, I like them like that. Uh, yeah, that reminds. I used to work at a Texaco station when I was in high school, and I uh, had one of those there. And I used to do everything: yeah. pump the gas, change the tires, change the oil, and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. That was many years ago. Yeah. Oh, not that, not that. <laughs> when I was a young chap. <laughs> Where are we going to go from here, Jer? Well, um, you know, we'll walk. We'll walk down. Maybe look at some of the pedal cars. That's really been my big thing. Okay. Is, is is the pedal cars? Mm -hmm. I like them because you because little... you can have a bunch of them and you don't take up a whole lot of room yeah. and, and they're not real real expensive. We could spend depending. a whole day in here. You have so much yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, the, the things like the, the, the <clears throat> pinball machine, the Coca Cola machine, mm -hmm. the jukebox, which you'll see as you pass down through there. Those are kind of display items. Decor mm -hmm. items, uh, uh, but I do buy and sell quite a few of the the pedal cars, mm -hmm. the bar stools. You know, back when we started in 1980-89 with with Classic, uh, guys were doing their their rec rooms and their uh, and their garages. I I just I can't embrace man cave. Mm -hmm. I don't like that term necessarily. <laughs> it makes us look like or sound like Neanderthals, uh -huh. doesn't it, man? Mm -hmm. I think my man cave.
This reminds me of my youth too, the, the old soda fountain. Where is this from, Jeff? This is from a local Isley's. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I got it from a good friend of mine. His father had, had purchased a building and it was in there. And uh, it's hard to find them this big and believe me, you don't want to move it. Uh, I mentioned Pump Boys and Dinettes. Mm -hmm. Todd goes, let's take this. And I said, no. It's that heavy. You, oh, it, you would need a whole bunch of people. This was for all your ice yeah, cream. You put your ice creams there and then yeah, you got your, you got your, your, your soda uh -huh. there. This is what they call a phantom piece. Coca-Cola never had a gas pump globe like that. Okay. But I felt that it fit. Yeah. I felt that it, that it looked good. And uh, then you had the different, the, apparently the different toppings. You know, I, for the Sundays. Right. Isley's was big at one time. Very Isley's big. was, you know, everybody, you know, well, not everybody. The young kids go, what's an Isley's? Yeah, right. right. But those of us uh, that, that have been around Back a little in while, the days, yeah. it was on, uh, there, there was a, an Isley's in every section of town. It was a big company. They started with a farm down near, I think, Mansfield or Wooster. So it's basically a local company then, right? yeah. around here. Ohio yeah, yeah, yeah. Company. And yeah. very collectible. Mm -hmm. uh, any Isley's items are very, are very collectible. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, do you remember the skyscraper cone? They, they used to have an ice cream, a cone, and then they would put the ice cream and it would be one long scoop of oh, ice I cream. I remember that one. And those, those scoops, the ice cream scoops mm -hmm. that they used for this, they're very, they're very collectible. Oh, wow. <laughs> Local folks, if you go down on the end of Mahoning Avenue, many of you might know this, <clears throat> that was the Isley's. It's a, it's a U-Haul now, mm -hmm. but that's an Isley's. Uh, that was their headquarters. Uh -huh. And if you look up top, and you'll realize it when you look and, and, and remember what I've said here, the man that owned Isley's was into boats. And he built his office like a ship <laughs> on the top of the building. Oh, now you're all going to drive down yeah, to Mahoning to Avenue and look at this, out. right? Yeah. And he used to stand out and look over his uh, his kingdom you know mm -hmm. uh, from the like Isley headquarters like he was the, like, captain, like, he was the yeah. captain like he was the captain of the ship so uh -huh. yeah Isley stuff is is very collectible that's cool we used to have one close to when greg and i worked at wkvn there was one right down the road probably half a mile from wkvn hey Isley's chip chop ham that's chip what they oh, that was just good <laughs> that was one of their that was one of, in fact they still somebody still they, they apparently bought the name uh -huh. and they still make I chip always chop remember ham. the ice cream and ice yeah that's the big thing counter what do we got here I pulled out a couple of, of magazines and, and uh, pieces of literature I thought you might be interested in uh, have you heard of Ed Roth big daddy rock sure okay this is from 1963 yeah, yeah it's yeah. Ed Roth's catalog with all those weirdo t-shirts I don't know if you can see that that's but it right says, to you it says Jerry <laughs> Dixie in Canfield Ohio now my uh -huh. thought is what did the mailman think mm -hmm. for 12 year old Jerry <laughs> Dixie in Canfield, Ohio? Oh, yeah. um, Barb and John, your son are, is mm -hmm. getting some weird things in the mail. So anyway, that was that was kind of the beginning of the uh, did you, did you of, of the crazy. Also how much it cost to ship it? Six, six cents. cents. <laughs> Look at that. Six cents. <laughs> I have I have had a chance to sell that uh -huh. catalog many times, and I said, nah, too too much too much of my youth, too much of my history. Wow. Pretty neat. I love it. I love it. I grew, and, and, that's what I grew up with too. I always had the right yeah, things around. Right. Well, and here's here's a, a rare piece. Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. Did oh. you ever think you would see Sports Illustrated mm -mm. with weirdo sweatshirts on mm -mm. the cover? And it's it's the, the the hot rod cult. It's called. And this is this is a rare piece. This is uh, April of 1961. Well, it was a cult back then, you know, just certain people oh, yeah. did it and uh, loved it, and uh, everybody. They were like the outcasts, really, if you were, had a hot rod back then. And, you know who yeah. used to do shirts, and I don't know if this name will ring a bell or not. Arnie Nashbar. Arnie Nashbar had Nashbar motor uh, bicycles. Okay, I remember bicycle, the bicycles. Nash, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Arnie was a bit of an artist, and he would. There was a. You know, each town had a local guy that had mm -hmm. a little bit of a talent. Of course, now it's 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 Guy Shively, our good friend. But I don't sure. think I don't think Guy could probably do a weirdo T-shirt. But there's mm -hmm. not 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 a big market for that. This is Street Rider magazine. This is the first car we drove in '96. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah, we just saw that one at uh, Summit. Uh, at at yeah. Summit, right? Yeah. And then these are just a few of our catalogs when we uh -huh. we started producing a, a catalog every year and uh, had uh, 
had some things in that that we would sell and ship out, mm -hmm. and, and the pedal cars were, were popular. This display case works out nice, and uh, uh, I put some of my, my collectibles. that old Indy car there, huh? Yeah, the, <laughs> that was Auburn Rubber Company from Barber, Barberton, Ohio. Uh -huh. uh, I'll probably get in trouble for that, but that's salt from Bonneville, the salt flat. They're not supposed to take any salt. Like, ah, I'll, take a little, I'll take a little salt. Uh -huh. and, uh, over in this section, we have an old TV, probably 1950s. It looks like I'd something, say. I'd say. Uh, something I had at my house there for the longest time in black and white. You know what we've done with the, with the TVs, and this isn't set up yet, but if you find, you'll see them at maybe a garage sale or an auction, and they go for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't work. Take the tube out, take that out, and put a flat screen in there. If you get the oh, right size, it, it fits, fits right in there. and it's just a way to That's show, your, neat, show yeah. your, your DVDs. Yeah. Well, flat screens are so cheap anymore. Yeah, Jeez. Yeah. And then you got a jukebox there, an old, uh, who's on it here? Probably you can tell by the Freddie and the Dreamers, and oh, Joe Cocker's on there. Well, we, up, we, update, we, update, we update a little bit. <laughs> but, but the significance of this, this is a 1953 Seaberg C. And uh, I, I'm gonna, do you remember seeing one of these types of jukeboxes? How about, how about a guy that would go, hey, and then hit the side of it? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a happy oh, day. Oh, that's the same one. This yeah. is the, the same farms. model. This is, a, this is uh -huh. what the hobby now calls a happy day's jukebox, but it's okay. a Seaberg C. He made them popular. And remember, right? he would come up and pound yeah. the side yeah. of it, and it would uh, kick on. Cool farms. You know, I, I, I really credit the happy days TV show of was really in the forefront of the renaissance of the throwback 50s stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the time. And, and you talk to some guys that are even older than us, and they go, those times weren't that much a happy day, yeah, you know. Yeah. But you know, they they, they tend to uh, mm -hmm. take a little bit of artistic license with with the way they did the show. Sure. But it was fun to see uh, to Richie and Fonz and, oh, yeah. and the whole thing. Oh, they all yeah. made a, a big career out of it. What do we got up here, Jeff? On the top. Uh, these are some of my soapbox derby helmets, mm -hmm. and, and when we get back over here, I'll show you. I. I was fortunate enough to be able to put together a collection. I have a derby helmet from every year. So why did they have a helmet? The driver had a helmet? Those were official this, helmets? These, this was the, the participant, the child's helmet. Okay. And then these were uh, the official's helmets. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, the adults, the parents, somebody mm -hmm. had to be in charge. At the, I have uh, over on this side, when we get back around to that, I have one that's autographed by Jimmy Stewart. Oh. And uh, by, um, I, I think it might have been Roy Rogers, but they mm -hmm. had celebrities that came to Akron. And of course, the, the, the That's still finals. real big though, right? The derby. It's, you know, the Derby has struggled. They mm -hmm. had to make some changes. And one of the changes was they realized that the kids never really built their cars. They were supposed to. Yeah. But short backstory, and I, I don't mean to tell a whole bunch of stories here, but it's kind of informational. The Derby started in Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Uh, by a, a fellow named Myron Scott. Scotty, they called him, Myron Scott. He was an ad sales person for the local newspaper. He saw kids going down the hill in their little cars, and he mm -hmm. goes, that might be a good way to have a competition and sell some ads. So he started it in Dayton. It took off. I have a 1934 Dayton uh, program. Th that's one of the holy grails. And then, of, and they hit, then they use regular soap boxes too, right? Well, that's, that's, how they, that's what he saw, and uh -huh. they started doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, he promoted it in 34, and in 34 and 35 it was in Dayton. And then he went to Chevrolet and got major sponsorship. And it was transferred from Dayton to Akron. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when it got big. And what you had to do in the, in the late 40s and, and in the 50s and the 60s is you had to go to your local Chevy dealer with your father and buy the two axles mm -hmm. and the four wheels. Those were always the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you built the car. But of course, Chevrolet's hook was they wanted Dad to come in and see the new oh, Chevrolet. Sure. That's yeah. a good so promotion. That was, yeah, that was what they get him in the showroom. That's the reason, and and just a a, a bit of a, a trivia that you can wow your friends with. Uh, Myron Scott, Scotty, went on to work for Chevrolet, and his claim to fame, and he's in the Hall of Fame down at the Corvette uh, Museum in Bowling Green. He named the Corvette. Oh. He came up with the name Corvette. Corvette was the name of a British. Uh, uh, military boat mm -hmm. that was very fast. It was known for its its speed in the water, and it was mm -hmm. small. And he said, "Let's call it Corvette." That's How cool is that? From. That's pretty good. <laughs> Something you might never yeah. use again, but yeah, but hey, it's, that's it's, nice. It's, I never knew where it came from. A little bit of information. Yeah. Didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Yeah. And how about let's slide over to here. This this is very interesting to me. You know, it's an old clock, and it's got to be 30s or something like I, that. I'm going to guess maybe 30, <clears throat> you know, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. the, that that's that Art Deco, which is but, an overused term, but, but it's a clock radio. 
Marianne and I, we, we like to go antiquing, and um, I saw this in an antique store, and I thought, it jumped out as gas pump. In fact, when I yeah, saw it from sure. the distance, I ran over to a gas, a wooden gas pump? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the same, yeah. You know, but it's a clock, mm -hmm. and you know, gas pumps, some of the early ones were clock-based, yeah, were clock-based. Sure. And then it's got a radio at the bottom. So mm -hmm. I just thought that was a combination of furniture and, and, and automobilia. Sure, that, so that's I, neat. The only thing it's missing is the globe on right, top. <laughs> right, and the speakers up there. The yeah, speaker that is really nice. Out, so. really nice. And just, I don't know if you can see from right here, but right next to it is our 1934 Ford Presto rod that was featured in the Street Rider. I'll give my, mm -hmm. my cars a plug. I, people know me for driving the, the Street Rider road tour cars. Right. But we have a, a collection of cars. Marianne has a 67 Cougar. I've got a 34 Ford and a 55 Chevy. And mm -hmm. uh, now I can drive them again. They felt neglected for about 24 years mm -hmm. when I was on I was on the tour, and I would come home, and I really didn't want to. Right. Yeah. Uh, Road. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, right. How's that? You got some neat pedal cars here, sir. Well, you know, they, they had pedal cars clear back to 1915 and 18, mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't have any of those early ones. And quite frankly, 1915 frank, and 1918? Yeah, oh, yeah. They, oh, they had the, 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 yeah, very, uh, very simplistic pedal cars. Mm -hmm. The ones that I <clears throat> am enamored with and, and, and kind of feature and, and buy and sell a lot of are what's called post war cars. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pre-World pre pre War II, they had, just like the cars, fenders, running boards, mm -hmm. the fenders were separate from the bodies. But then as we got into uh, post-World War II, they started to look like the cars. This is what they call a 48 Pontiac. So this has got a 48 Pontiac grill. I grew up in one of these, but the station wagon version, I've got one over there. This is the fire truck version. So they like to do, the, the pedal car companies, they would make fire trucks, they would make station wagons because it was good for two kids. Mm -hmm. The brothers could both, you know, the one brother's mm -hmm. on the back pushing and the other brother's driving, same with the station wagon. The cars weren't, the cars, just as cars and not station wagons and, and, and fire trucks, are a little rarer, which makes them a little bit more desirable. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a 48. Before we move oh, on, yeah. okay, I gotta ring the bell. No bell, the ring? <laughs> you know why we do that? We take the ringer out because everybody wants to, everybody wants to <laughs> ring the bell. Sure. Who's That's ringing? Right, Who's on. playing with my toys? <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> and, anyway, I, 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 maybe I can find you one. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, I'll I tell still you what. I've got a lot of kid in me, even though I'm If I'm you not. would like to take this baby home, <laughs> I have the ringer. Okay. If that is what would complete the sale that rack. Would do it. <laughs> I'll get the ringer in this thing. This this is a car version, which is a car. Mm -hmm. So only one child could play with this. So that's why they're a little bit rarer. Uh, they weren't quite as popular as cars were the station wagons and, 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 the, and the fire trucks. Right. This is these three are are reproductions. Okay. This is for my for my money, this is the cool. I guess like a skateboard. Do you skateboard, Rick? I used to. Yeah. Want to give it a? No, maybe, no, maybe no, not. Break my hips. Not, not, <laughs> not, not next to the jute. Part. Okay. No. Dumb. Kill the, myself. Uh, no. This, I feel, is is one of the coolest wagons. Now, can you imagine being a kid and having your dad buy you this wagon that had light up headlights? Oh, yikes. This was the uh -huh. steering mechanism. Of course, you could pull, pull it like that. This is a 1936-37 Aeroflight wagon by Globe. This is a reproduction. Mm -hmm. I've owned a couple <clears throat> uh, originals, and they're they're pretty they're pretty rare, pretty valuable. We had them restored, and and I sold them. In fact, a uh, a, a Murray of Ohio pedal car fits right in, inside oh, and sits yeah, on. It wasn't made for that, uh -huh. but but that's a, a that's a downhill so, racer. So what do you call this pedal car wagon? Or well, this is a wagon, just a regular, a, wagon, wagon. a regular wagon. Regular wagon, but it's okay. got you know the the idea of the uh, oh okay the fenders were all blended in uh, and with the light up headlights. These hmm. are reproductions that uh, were made because of the popularity of the Tri Five Chevy. Mm -hmm. That's a fifty five. 55 Chevy look there. They never made a 55 Chevy pedal car 
but they sold an awful lot of these reproductions here within the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Mid 50s, late 40s. This this was kind of uh, it looks like a big custom, doesn't it? Sure, like a this Merc. is my favorite. That is, oh, yeah. That's a beauty. Yeah. This thing is heavy. I mean, mm -hmm. physically heavy. That's a real one. That's well, oh yeah, no, this is this is an original. One. In fact, this is this is the nicest one that I've found. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I always keep the best ones until you can upgrade your collection. Sure. And this is based off of what? A Buick. A Buick. This looks like a Buick. I was going to say a Hudson uh, or something. And <laughs> uh, at least my estimation yeah. of Buick. Mm -hmm. And they made two different versions. Uh, the pedal car companies were, were uh, I hate to say notorious because it makes it sound bad, but they, they would do different levels pricing wise, mm -hmm. you know, an economy and entry level and then a little, just like cars, right? Mm -hmm. So this was the torpedo. The Comet version was exactly the same, except it had four portholes. Oh, four okay. Holes that, there, that's like what the, makes it look like the Buick. Like, yeah. the, like the Buick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the, the kid the kid would get one of these and, and ride it around, and then the rich kid mm -hmm. that always ruined things for everybody. <laughs> this goes, looks like oh, a rich kid. My, there, well, yeah. but, the, but the step up is the con with the holes in the oh, side. Oh, so, oh, hey, okay. yeah, well, I got Yeah, yeah I got so, one of the big ones. <laughs> But, you got a little fire truck here. Or? Yep. Now, now we're moving into the era when it looked more like the square cars of mm -hmm. the late 50s, early 60s. And it's got twin headlights. This is original. Just like This is original. This is a really, really clean original. And it's got a lever here, and I don't have the battery in it. But you pull the lever back, and you can hear the motor, and it turns and the, the light, and the light comes off. <laughs> That's it. So that was, that would be, this gonna, one was, what would they say? On, I want to put the light on. I want to put this this is option, <laughs> option, <laughs> optioned out. Well, uh -huh. I, yeah. It keeps the kids from playing with them, right? Yeah. That's why I'm I took the kid. You I had the batteries in. I said, "Rick's coming. Kid. Get the yeah. <laughs> get the batteries out of the get the batteries out of the car." And we got like five more back in this corner here. Another one of the the '51 Murray Champs. They call these dip side because of the dip side with the with the flares. Uh, they came back and then up again. You know, if you if you like this style and a mm -hmm. lot of this, hey, yeah, Rick, Rick, ah. come here. Enough. Oh, jeez. Come on, found it. We, Hey, I can put you into this, baby. It's a fire truck, all original paint, one owner, a little uh -huh. girl. A little girl owned this, uh -huh. and then we just put it away. So. I gave it to my grandson. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. This 51 Murray Champ is very, very popular, this body style. Mm -hmm. This is the one they chose for the first reproduction. And they started making them over across the ocean, and they did reproduction. Based off what, Osmoville? This is, well, this, this is, again, the, the Murray Studebaker. This is the Studebaker oh, okay. Champion. And if you Google that, if you look that up and mm -hmm. see this, it looks pretty similar mm -hmm. to a champ. Okay. And uh, a champion, they say. Mm -hmm. And they made a couple different versions. The hobby today, uh, we got involved a long time ago and everybody was restoring cars. Mm -hmm. The hobby today, like so many things, is original. Right. Original paint, original graphics, original. It's hard to find them that are in good condition mm -hmm. because we all Beat played, them we all pretended we mm -hmm. were at Canfield Speedway mm -hmm. in 1960 and banged, and banged, into, <laughs> banged into them. Uh -huh. So it's hard to find them with the original paint. Now this one, is uh, the, the uh, 48 Pontiac mm -hmm. grill that we talked about, 48 mm -hmm. Pontiac. That's sharp looking. And this there. is like just, mm -hmm. this is right on the edge of saying, leave it alone. All right. Don't, don't restore it. Because the minute you restore it, anyway, we used to sell a lot of parts for pedal cars and, and I still have a source for them. But if you put just guys that say, well, I'm gonna leave the car the same, but I'm gonna put new hubcaps and new tires. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everything else looks really bad. So you either gotta go all the way yeah. or leave it alone. Right. In fact, there's a, there's a big market now, believe it or not, for used hubcaps, mm. because if you're just completing a car, mm -hmm. you want it to look of the period. Sure. So you don't want something shiny. You don't mm -hmm. want a chrome hubcap on it. It costs a lot to uh, restore one of these too. Yeah, probably yeah. more than you're asking for. Now, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> if you had to buy, you know, if you had to buy the, the tires, the hubcaps, mm -hmm. the steering wheel, which a lot of times is gone. This is gone because people pick them up and, and rip it off. This plane is, I think, a replacement on mm -hmm. the on the plane. Yeah, you probably have two fifty, two hundred and fifty dollars in the in the parts. Mm -hmm. uh, then get someone to paint it. That's uh, yeah. yeah it's just like car. Yourself. You know, it really yeah. mirrors the the full size car hobby. Mm -hmm. Is like okay, I'm only going to spend a thousand dollars. Yeah. But now I got to do this. 
you're usually followed by honey. Yeah. I've got to do this, honey. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it needs to look like that. So that's why I kind of like uh -huh. the pedal cars, is you can really, uh, you can play, play and enjoy. And they don't take up a lot of room. They don't take gas and oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're Very kind fun. of, yeah. you know, people put them in their rec rooms sure. and that sort of thing. And we got an old scale here. What do you think holds this thing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess 40s. Hold on, I got a nickel stand. No, I, I, no we won't come do on, that. I'm working, I'm working on, on it, okay? I'm working on it. Maybe <laughs> next year when we come back, okay. I'll get on this game. But it says, have you, I'm not getting on it. <laughs> have you gained or lost weight? And, you know, the, to do that. And, have you gained? <laughs> and then for the nickel, you get your weight, and then you'd get a fortune oh. that would come up. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, that's just another, an, another decorative piece that we had in, mm -hmm. in, that we, that we uh, put on display. For all your old timers. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dean Moon. They're still around, aren't they? Yeah, they were bought. Mm -hmm. Funny story about Moon Equipment. It was bought by a Japanese company. And I don't mean Japanese so that they can make it in Japan. Chico is the president of, of Moon USA, a friend of mine, and uh, bought it 25 years ago mm -hmm. and just wanted that iconic brand. Dean had passed away. The relatives weren't going to do anything, and they came in, uh, he and, and his partner from Japan, uh, Built it up, and now they what go. What are they famous for? Their well, caps and well, well they I did the, the moon cap, discs, yeah. the disc, and yeah. then they did a lot of, uh, of aluminum die cast, that the accelerator pedal, a okay. moon a moon gas pedal, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. they made all the different accessories, and then the moon tanks in okay, the front. Yeah. Those are the spun aluminum. Right. Dean Moon worked a lot with. Uh, uh, with spun aluminum. Mm -hmm. And here I'm going to give you another trivia bit. You're going to beat all your friends in the trivia <laughs> contest. <laughs> Dean Moon had a, had a facility in Santa Fe Springs. And this is in the in the 50s, in the late 50s. Pretty pretty large building, his manufacturing facility. And there was a, a guy that became pretty famous that rented the back of his building mm -hmm. for his little shop. And that man was Carol Shelby. Oh, geez. And he developed the Cobras yeah, yeah. in the back uh -huh. of that building. So it's like, wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, Two you, iconic names. You, there, you, huh? you, you never know. Here's, a, again, another one of those. This is a poster from Guy Shaw. I believe mm -hmm. we talked about Guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the cover of our first of our first classic automobilia catalog. It was called... I, we originally called it classic transportation, mm -hmm. and we would get calls from people that said, "I need some cars hauled out to California." And I go, oh, "We do pedal cars. Uh -huh. not, not, we don't. We're not a transport uh -huh. company." So I changed it to automobilia. He did that in 1990. Yeah, yeah. We started in 1989. He did that. We set that up. That mm -hmm. was my my station wagon pedal car. And uh... All right, let's slide into over here. Okay. All right, Jerry, in this section, we got cars of a different size, okay? Pedal cars became real popular mm -hmm. uh, in the, the 80s, the late 80s, as we embraced our youth again. And Hallmark, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. Hallmark greeting cards. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Hallmark is famous for jumping on some hobbies and trends and fads, and they make Christmas ornaments mm -hmm. out of things. So these two are Hallmark mm -hmm. die casts. And you get a little bit of weight to them. Right. And that's one of the second editions. Mm -hmm. First, that might have been the first series. Hallmark it has a has a marketing, gosh, I hate to say ploy, mm -hmm. but a marketing style where they will bring a series of maybe six. And there were mm -hmm. six of different that they picked the Murray Champ that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. And they bring out a very limited edition of the first group. Mm -hmm. It takes off like wildfire becomes very valuable. I, do you have the first six of the, of the Hallmark Kitty Car Classics, it's called? I have about a half dozen kitty cars in them. They're this size here. Yeah. What they do is they limit the first run to maybe 6,000, 5,000 pieces. Mm -hmm. Price goes up. The next run is unlimited. Mm -hmm. But they've already convinced people that, hey, these things are going to be worth a lot of money. Look where the first, you know, the yeah. first six models of them. So they sell tons and tons and tons. And as you get later on in the series, is they're not quite as valuable. Mm -hmm. These are, are, are Christmas tree ornaments. These are not Hallmark, but another company that kind of copied that style. Right. Uh, they would bring out Christmas ornaments. Now, 
Hallmark still does a, a series of Christmas tree ornaments of pedal cars. And they come out, uh, obviously, before Christmas. And then uh, I would go and buy up all that they had at the end. Uh, uh, some of your viewers might be familiar enough with the Hallmark stores. Mm -hmm. They cut all of their Christmas stuff, the price, in half the day after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I've spent time in lines with a lot of ladies buying Hallmark ornaments. And <laughs> oh, I'm here for the pedal. <laughs> Oh, I've got a lot of that. And these are these are Mark's uh, toys. Oh, Mark's are like really 40, 46, yeah. 47, yeah. 48. I like. That was one of the biggest toy makers around. That right? particular Mark's, style. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Do we okay. have time for another quick story. Sure. If I can reach this. I got a call because I collected gas station stuff for mm -hmm. years. I got a call from a friend of mine in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he said, "Jerry, you're still collecting gas cans." This goes back 30 years. I go, "Sure, yeah, I'm collecting gas cans." He goes, "Well." There's a, a farm that just got sold, and the old man that, that used to own it passed away. The, the, these, this building is filled with oil cans. And I said, full oil cans or empty oil cans or what? And he goes, the building is made out of oil cans. And I said, I said, Robin, come on, come on. Here, tell, tell me what you're talking uh -huh. about. 1939, this fella worked at the truck stop, and he brought all the empty oil cans home, and he put them on their side like cordwood and put chicken wire and plaster and built the walls of a three bay building out of oil cans. Wow. And he must have saw it in Popular Science or uh -huh. one of his buddies. But I went and still got still got some say? plaster. But there's the plaster. That was part of the wall. <laughs> so what it what it did for these oil cans is it preserved them. They were all from 1939. Mm -hmm. And there's no sunlight. Uh, and I went and they disassembled the building. Unfortunately, the young fellow that bought the building wouldn't wait for us to take it apart and he mm. pushed it over. Oh. And he, he is the one that created these yeah. kind of dents. Yeah. I got 1,800 oil cans out of this hoard <laughs> uh -huh. out in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I went to a, uh, a collectible show for oil cans. That, and our, that Anarco was in there too. Uh -huh. and that's a rare can. I sold. 25 oil cans out of the 1800 got all my money back. Wow. Because there were some rare ones. They yeah. were, uh, uh, with, the, with the oil cans, the regional brands are a lot more uh, desirable right. because they didn't make as many. So the Gulf and the Shell, there's a lot of those, but still, mm -hmm. these were. Uh, but I think that story about the, the building made out of oil cans, I, I had to keep, I've sold a bunch of them. They're you almost made all walls of them. out of oil cans. They back huh? built them, and the only ones that were in bad shape were the ones that had the misfortune of being stacked underneath the antifreeze cans. Oh, yeah. Because the antifreeze yeah, just tore, yeah, just tore it up. To but these, these were at the top, so mm -hmm. that's my that's my oil can oil can story. Pretty but another cool. one another one of uh, Guys. Guy's drawings, Guy Shively's drawings. These are pictures from Canfield Speedway. Oh, oh wow. Every mm -hmm. Saturday night mm -hmm. was the slogan. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and that's uh, uh, the, the announcer, uh, uh, boring, uh, young, uh, not young, a little younger than me, but 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 uh, a fellow that raced there a, a long time, John Sandquist. Mm -hmm. He had the collection of photographs because I think his father, grandfather, he was friends with the Finleys that ran. I sold pop at Cancel Speedway. getting a little dry mouth here and I said, oh, I'm going to get a cold Coke here. I open it up and Jerry pulls out these old hot rod magazines. This is, this is where the good stuff is, oh, the is, good stuff. is hidden. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what's happened to print magazines. Sure. It's gone away. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I feel bad about it too, you know. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's something that we all enjoyed uh, getting, getting the magazine in, in the mail each sure. month and uh, mm -hmm. going in your favorite seat and reading that magazine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, uh, they've kind of most of them gone digital right that happened to street rotter magazine broke mm -hmm. my heart and that's yeah. who i worked with for for 24 years with street rotter well, we magazine talked about that before how many mag magazines did they eliminate then? in one fell swoop uh one year ago uh next month uh, motor trend that that bought the entire company eliminated 19 of the 20 
21 all magazines, car, car magazines, all car related, yeah, Street yeah. Rider, uh, Rod and Custom, mm -hmm. all the, the favorites that we mm -hmm. all try. Sure. But the magazine that started it all mm -hmm. was Hot Rod. This is a, this is a 1948 Hot Rod magazine. When, when, do you know when they started? They started, they start, this is a 49, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. They started in 1948. In, in January of 1948, Bob Peterson, you've heard of Peterson Publishing, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Bob mm -hmm. Peterson, very young man at the time, and his partner, Bill Lindsay, started a company mm -hmm. that was gonna publish a car magazine. And they sold it at a car show in January of 1948 at the, at the Pan American building in Los Angeles. It was mm -hmm. a huge car show. And they sold uh, their, their magazine there and the rest is history. They, they, they went into the, in fact, a, another, a little form of trivia. You would think, and, and whenever you collect anything, the very first one is the one that's valuable, right? right? <clears throat> so January of 1948, Hot Rod is very desirable. They only sold them at that show. Mm -hmm. There was no subscriptions. So there was a very limited number of them. And the format was a little bit bigger. They reduced the format in 49. And everybody's after January 48, Hot Rod. I found out through through some collectors that the rare one is February of 1948. You go, why would February be mm -hmm. rare? What they had done is spent all their money to get January published, but you know how print takes a while, especially mm -hmm. back then. They didn't have a lot of money to print February because it had already had to be in production. So they had to do a smaller run because they had spent all their money in January. So the February issue of, of Hot Rod Magazine is much uh, smaller in, in, circul in size. Mm -hmm. They weren't even circulated then. They weren't, they weren't sold as uh, subscriptions. So I, I was, I've was i got two of, of the February. Oh, okay. Good. I don't have any of the Januaries mm -hmm. yet. I got a reproduction, but mm -hmm. I've got two of the Februaries. So Hot Rod Magazine has... has so uh, basically, I didn't think of this, but uh, basically after the war, Hot Rods become popular, right? Oh, yeah. that, were they before the war, you know? There were there were hot rods on the dry lakes. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't go to, to Bonneville until 1949. Okay. This is the Bonneville Speedway, but they ran at a place called El Mirage, mm -hmm. which was a dry lake north of Los Angeles. And yes, there were hot rods as we know them mm -hmm. pre-war, but it's when they really took off was post-war. And and a lot of the reason a lot of the reason was that the guys came back from the war and they had been mechanics on tanks right. and on airplanes. Mm -hmm. They had that exciting life, although it was, you know, treacherous, obviously, sure, and sure. dangerous. But they lived that, that style of life, and you know, we're going to go home and take naps all the time. Right, right. So we're going to do some fun yeah. things. And, and they and brought so a lot of stuff with them and yeah. they, they, uh, they got into They got into the hot rods and the hot rod scene, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it, it developed from there. They, they went to Bonneville. A group of them went to Bonneville in 1949, and they stayed at the um, at barracks in Wendover. Uh, uh, there was an air base there, and mm -hmm. for 50 cents, they could, could stay for a day in mm -hmm. one of the empty barracks, mm -hmm. and they ran, you know, oh, the yeah. Pearson Brothers and, and, and those guys. So, cool, and then the, the, rest is, the rest is Hot history. Hot Rod, Street Rod, tell me the difference. Hot Rods, post-war, they were known as Hot Rods. Okay. Well, there were some rowdy rascals that got involved in hot rods. Uh -huh. They were they were the bad boys, uh -huh. at least in, in some some eyes, they were the bad boys. And hot rod actually had a bad name. Now, again, we're talking about the car mm -hmm. hot rod, right. not hot rod magazine. Right, right. Yes. But but the, the the term hot rod became known with the, the ne'er do wells, the you know the Fonzie kind of guys mm -hmm. that were were out raising hell. And so, as it progressed, when the National Street Rod Association started in, in the 70s, it got up to that. They didn't want to be called Hot Rod, and there was mm -hmm. already a hot National Hot Rod Association. They were the drag racers. So they coined, uh, in fact, Gilbert Bug, who was one of the founders of, of NSRA, they coined the term street rod, and they felt that that was a little calmer and tamer and mm -hmm. more family friendly and that yeah. sort of Is thing. Is there a year uh, associated with the Hot Rod? like before 1949 or 1959 compared to the street rod. Right now, there's some hardcore hot rod street rod guys mm -hmm. yelling at their televisions going, yeah, there sure is, and if it was after 1949, it's mm -hmm. not It's not a street rod, it's not that. You know, yes. There was a big controversy right. because 
uh, as we got into, uh, it used to be, your car had to be 1949 or earlier. And that was the hot to be considered To be considered even at the National Street Rod Association, oh, okay. Street Rod. They mm -hmm. wouldn't let you in if you had a 1951 car. Well then, as things yeah. moved on, and you know, 1948 was how many years ago? 60 years ago. So as things moved on, they realized that people had cars from the 50s, tri fi Chevy, mm -hmm. and they wanted to let them in because they needed to keep their numbers up. But there was a huge controversy when NSRA, the National Street Rod Association, said, we're going to let cars all the way up to 1960 mm -hmm. or 1961. They got over it. The, 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 the old timers got mm -hmm. over it. But there was a lot of people that you know felt that it shouldn't be a hot rod or called a street rod or right. hot rod if it was after 1949 in in manufacturers year. Yeah. So now they let now they I think the NSRA has got a sliding schedule of, yeah. of 30 years. So you can take a 1989 car and, still and get into the NSRA event. Okay, and in some eyes, yeah. it's just a just blasphemy. Mm -hmm. but, but if you go to, hey, we go to, the, we go to the Quaker Steak and Lube. You see cars that are of all eras. Sure. And what I tell people is, look, if you don't want to look at that particular mm -hmm. car, look at another mm -hmm. car. There's other cars there. Don't, don't. That's why there's so many different too, people. There's so many different people, different, different styles, styles of cars. So yeah. you got to enjoy them all. You know, you see some of these cars. Man, they got the big wheels on them. You know, it might not be your taste. Or the ones I like uh, right now. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. Or the like the uh, the Puerto Ricans or the Mexicans when they do all that. Lowriders. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. You know, I never Very liked creative, those, man. but you you look at them and you go. They're all how a, much, they're all an expression of, of people's personality. How much work they put yeah. into them. It's just how much talent that you know. Just a different style. That's all. With <clears throat> you know, we're talking about about magazines and the cancellation of magazines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and everybody was upset about that, and they don't—they don't print a lot of magazines. I have a collection of about 5,000 magazines, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, if everybody's mad about not printing magazines, I got magazines, so mm -hmm. I, I sell magazines on eBay. And I started another little company called the Hot Rod Paper Company, mm -hmm. and I sell vintage magazines, and I sell custom van magazines. Gee, I wonder where they came from. <laughs> the van yeah. shop. Mm -hmm. I sell custom motorcycle magazines. We didn't even talk about the fact that, mm -hmm. that Marianne and I had a motorcycle shop in the, in the early 70s. Oh, yes. I built, built custom custom bikes. So all my old motorcycle magazines, my van magazines, uh, and some of the more obscure of, of the uh, uh, automotive magazines. But when you, you would think a, a 50s magazine from, uh, uh, from 1955 Hot Rod, you'd think that would be worth some money. Mm -hmm. It's about five dollars, and the reason is they printed millions right. of them. By the mid '50s and late '50s, hot rodding had become so popular that every kid in America had a subscription to Hot Rod magazine. Mm -hmm. So some of the ones that you think would be valuable aren't necessarily as much. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that because somebody watching might have a collection of magazines, and yeah. if I'm buying them, they're not worth that much. But if I'm selling them, they're pretty. <laughs> yeah, rare. they're worth a lot more. <laughs> Probably up in their attic somewhere. They got stacks. Well, of them. that's what's uh -huh. that's what's happened. Yeah. Well, is it. as the guys as the guys pass mm -hmm. away. Uh, you know, Ralph had a bunch of magazines, and Edna tells the grandkids, mm -hmm. hey, get up there and get Grandpa's magazines out. I got a stack of collectible automobile magazines. You ever see that? That was just a nice magazine. Uh, automobile? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't get rid of them. I, I look at them, I say, I can't throw these out. They're just too nice. You know? Here's what we suggest to people, <clears throat> because we get that call all the time of, I've got a bunch of Street Rider magazines or Hot Rod or whatever. whatever. Um, veterans, hospitals mm -hmm. are a great place to donate. Uh, believe it or not, they've actually got shop class coming back at some mm, of the vocational good, schools. Good, yeah, right. you know, and so, mm -hmm. you know, see if they want right. them rather than just filling up a landfill and recycling. Right. Yeah, please recycle I, if you I like can't to do give anything else. People, like, if they feature that car in that magazine, I'll, you know, I'll say, oh, I got, I'm going to go back and look and see if I got that magazine it's featured in, and then I'll give it to them. You know, yeah. that, that was just a nice magazine, and I think they're still making it too, so. Yeah, well, they you know, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, we get calls, I get calls a lot where they say, hey, my dad's car was featured in 1978 in mm -hmm. Street Rider Magazine. Uh, I go, okay, we're narrowing it down. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go to the stacks. I've got a bunch of magazines. Mm -hmm. And cool. we'll go through and try uh -huh. to find, if we could find mm -hmm. that person's. Or another thing that people do is they'll buy uh, a magazine from the month and year that you were born. Right.
Okay, we're now in another section of uh, Jerry's collection here. These, what do we got? Going okay, on? these are, I'll, we'll start all the way at the top. Your okay. favorite and mine, Holly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and maybe some of your viewers are going to go, Holly, I remember mm -hmm. Holly Beverage. Yeah. Holly Beverage was made right around the corner on Meridian, on Meridian it's Road. A, it's a Youngstown. Uh -huh. It's a Youngstown. It's a Youngstown brand. And they Here, still sell ginger ale too. You believe that? They, um, this is a, a another Derby helmet, a Mark's a Mark's uh, uh, trash hauler. <laughs> but I wanted to show you, I had mentioned about Canfield Speedway, and this is not in the best condition here, but uh, it, is, it is the right piece. And believe me, I paid more than 50 cents for uh -huh. this. This is a program for when NASCAR ran their Memorial Day race uh -huh. at Canfield Speedway in 1952. Wow. They did 52 and 50. Oh, they had the full-size cars there. Oh yeah, they oh, ran wow. it on the half mile. They, this was before Charlotte. You know the mm -hmm. Charlotte race at some Memorial mm -hmm. Day? It used to be in Canfield. And wow. it was called the Poor Man's 500. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, a, cool. that's, a, that's a rare piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work at the Speedway, sold soda pop. Um, there's a, a fellow from Canfield, Ken Leonard. I don't know if you've ever talked to Ken or not. Mm -hmm. He and I uh, collect Canfield Speedway stuff. And uh, if we get doubles, we kind of share it back and forth. This is... Uh, a photograph of a display at a car show. Zyder Speedways mm -hmm. ran uh, Canfield Speedway before the Finleys took over, and uh, the, the viewers aren't going to be able to see, but you see that there. There's a there's a little stand up there. Okay, that is. This is one of them. This is a. This is really fragile. No, it okay, says Canfield that. Midget Auto Races. <laughs> Finley. This is when Finley, George Finley was the original uh -huh. owner. He uh, he had the, the the races there. Yeah, we go to some shows and we still see some of those at the shows. You know that those old uh, races. Not, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, those are. In fact, those... that one lady we uh, interviewed. Uh, can't remember her name now. She Jerry. Has a, Jerry. Is it Jerry? Yep. That's a hard Jerry. one to remember. I don't know why. <laughs> no. We, um, we got her at our car show, I think, John, a number of years ago when we was down at Shepherd's. So. I've I, I got to mention because he's going to grab me and say, hey, you didn't say that I gave that to you. But, <laughs> but Ken, Ken Leonard gave me this. Uh -huh. so, that, uh, from, from, from Canfield Speedway. Ken is a little bit younger than me, but he used to work there too. This is one of, uh, we, we have holy grails in our hobby of soapbox derby stuff. Sure. This is a 1934 program. Now, that's the first year that they did the Derby, and it was mm -hmm. in Dayton, Ohio. So, as you can imagine, that, that's, a, that's a rare piece, too. You uh -huh. can look at that, that won't fall apart. Soapbox Derby, 1934, you can tell that kind of streamlined yeah. lettering and, and graphics. And I just got some other collectibles. I've got a lot of Canfield Speedway stuff. Pay 10 cents, pay no more. <laughs> uh, again, add, add about three zeros on that, yeah, yeah. and that's what I paid for that. Um, they had, uh, you know, comic books that you you had comic books stuffed in your math book, and they thought you were looking at your <laughs> at your yeah. math assignment. Yeah. But uh, they had the, Hot Rod Comics. Is that the old tank car? Yep, yeah. that's uh, from yeah. Bonneville. Yeah. Right. The speed lines. Those, on those are real big one kind of yeah. tank cars. They used to take them up fuel tanks from the uh, jets. Uh, right, right. Yeah, they fe yeah. they felt that that was as streamlined as as you could get. And it worked. And. Uh, and that was all that that war surplus. Mm -hmm. So the hot rod comics were were popular, and more and more speedway stuff, mm -hmm. some some models and things, uh, race cars. They uh, this is a good this is another good soapbox derby piece. Shell oil <laughs> for your soapbox <laughs> and derby. Wow, wow. Yeah. So I, I like the derby stuff. Crazy mm -hmm. enough, I I was never in the derby. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in Canfield. They used to have it at Lethingwell, mm -hmm. uh, out by the fairgrounds. Was Lethingwell. Uh, they had it in Youngstown in, uh, on, uh, I think, 5th Avenue. Mm -hmm. They would come down 5th Avenue. And it had a resurgence. It gained, it gained some popularity again. It's still around. And it's still, it, yeah. is, it is mm -hmm. still around. They had, a, they had a couple of different major corporations sponsor them. Levi did it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a rubber toy from the <laughs> Auburn Rubber Company in Barberton, Ohio, mm -hmm. where my mom's from. Now we're in the soapbox derby area, the, the good stuff where all the helmets are. Now you look, this Rick, like Rick that is, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I, I am going to buy you dinner at the Lou <laughs> next summer uh -huh. if you will wear that to the show. <laughs> it's a steel helmet, it's like yeah. a war helmet well, or something. Well, what, yeah. what they did is they, and, and this is a collection 
of every Soapbox Derby helmet mm -hmm. from the first year all the way up until the helmets started becoming plastic. Look at that, they look like old war helmets. Like that's a, war that's, a, helmet. turret, that's mm -hmm. a turret top. And Fisher Body, division of, of Chevrolet, mm -hmm. Fisher Body was a sponsor with Chevrolet and they stamped those out. Now can you mm -hmm. imagine doing a header with that on your head and falling out and yeah. the ringing. Yeah. The next helmet, and we won't do every one, but I've got to do a couple highlights. That is, that's a rare piece from 1938. Ooh, this looks like a fighter pilot's helmet here. Look at the flaps. That here. is what the, the fellas that made it to the, what was called the All-American in Akron, the finals. Mm -hmm. If they made it to the finals, every participant in the finals got a chrome-plated helmet like mm -hmm. that rare, rare piece there. That's what the fighter helmets look like. Yep. You know those yep. helmets? Strap yeah. them down and... Yeah. Uh, uh, and then the same thing. These are pre World War pre World War II. This is a 1937 very rare trophy. This is pretty, this uh, is nice. That's very yeah, nice. And it's kind of like the rings of Saturn. Yeah. That's old number seven, which was the the logo of the Derby because uh, supposedly the first car that won in in Dayton was was old number seven. It looked like that. Hard to find those. They're used, the the cars usually broken off of them. You mm -hmm. know they get shossled around. Inter interesting bit of trivia. Uh, they did not have the Derby in forty. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Mm -hmm. They missed five years, four years, five years. <clears throat> when they came back in 46, they didn't have any money. The, the, the Derby uh, company, corporation that, that, that ran it, the, the Derby Foundation. So what they did is they got Army Surplus helmet liners. Those are the ones that go yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah they go okay. inside the, 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 the soldier's helmets. You mm -hmm. can see that. Sure. And they painted them silver and they put the decal. This is, a, this is an official helmet. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what they did so they could continue the derby. And none of them had straps on. Did they have straps on them? Well, so I, they think that they, I, I think that they did. Yeah, they okay. did have a strap that just went under yeah. their... You know, under they their... wouldn't do much good if they didn't have a strap. They'd fly out. And, and the then would go. the glasses, they would have glasses oh, you know, okay. that they would put on. I collect, I mean, obviously I collect, collect a lot everything. of stuff, yeah, but, but yeah. to focus on, on the Derby, I collect the 10th anniversary. And you say, mm -hmm. this is 1947, mm -hmm. but you say, now wait a minute, Jerry, you just told us that the Derby started in 34. Mm -hmm. How could 1947 be the 10th anniversary? It's because of those years that they didn't have it during right. the war. So this was the 10th anniversary. I think that logo is so cool with the checkered flag. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm searching for derby stuff, because I got a lot, but I look for the 10th anniversary flags, shirts, that sort of thing that came right. from 1947. And then they went up through and they have the, the logos from each year, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. And then about mid 50s, four or five, they stopped putting the year on and they just put the 24th or the 25th. But these helmets were all plastic. Well, they're kind of a fiber. Yeah. If you look at them, they're, I don't they're think they had plastics back then, did they? No. And plastics, then, I think, so what, early 60s or something. And then they went up to mm. 1964, and these are in the in the years that they are 1964, and they switched to plastic in '65, mm -hmm. and that's, that's when I, think I, I said early 60s plastic. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> participant shirt from 47. Um, this is a participant shirt from 37. Mm -hmm. This helmet was an official's helmet and it's got the governor, the governor of Ohio has signed it. Oh. Jimmy Stewart signed it. Oh, yikes. And the fellow that won the Derby the previous year signed it for uh -huh. whoever this official was. I was fortunate enough to be able to get Jimmy it. Jimmy Stewart, what when, a great actor he was. Whenever you, you see, he was. whenever you see something referred to as the All-American, mm -hmm. that means it was the finals. It was mm -hmm. the championships in Akron. And any of you, if you have any interest in this at all, go up to Akron. It's usually the end of July. I'm sure you can Google it and find out when it is. The finals are amazing. They bring back some of the old cars. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys, of course, the older ones are passed away. But uh, they former champions. Uh, they've got cars on display, vintage cars. If you have any interest in the soapbox derby at all, you know uh, I remember All American. Remember McDonald's? They had the All American. What was it? Yeah, the, fries and a coke for All American for under a buck. Yeah. <laughs> Special <laughs> sauce, lettuce, uh -huh. cheese on a sesame seed. Oh, that was the Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. That was the Big Mac. Those uh -huh. slogans that are burned in my mind. Right. But more, more, you know, more der derby stuff. Uh, what, what do we got here? Okay. 
Before World War II, mm -hmm. apparently they didn't have a lot of rules about what you could do. Mm -hmm. Obviously a, a 12 year old boy did not build this car. Someone's 12 year old, somebody, a 12 year old boy must have had a tinsmith for uh -huh. a father because this is a pretty incredible piece. Sure, I, I bought sure this is. online. This is, this is metal, but those are derby wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, 37, 38 derby wheels. Was there any special, did they have to have those wheels? Yes. Okay. You had to use the derby wheels and the okay. derby axles back to uh, when I discussed of going to the Chevy dealer and getting right. the official axles. And <clears throat> people would say, well, why didn't they just use the same wheels from year to year? Because you had a five year span that you could be in a certain class. Mm -hmm. Well, what they had was they had a series of stars, stars and dashes on the wheels and it was the code for the year they were. Oh. So they knew. These, um, <laughs> I'm a, a derby geek. These, <laughs> these are uh -huh. the gold wheels. Yeah. 1946. Wow, these things are, one, are they? one year, they did the wheels in gold. And when you talk to the old timers, they'll look at you and go, the gold wheels were the fastest wheels ever. <laughs> Whether they were or not, who knows? Uh -huh. But. Yeah, that's a rare, that's a rare Where one there. Stamp with, uh, left rear, left right. 19, 1946. These you were things a, weigh probably what, 10, 12 pounds. Uh, yeah, they have some weight to well, them. I'm surprised. It's all, it's all, yeah, it's gravity. Yeah. It's gravity. So uh, they would add add some weight. The, the decals have come off of a couple of mm -hmm. those, but that was 46 only were the gold wheels they had come back after the, the war. Official soapbox derby tire. Yeah. <laughs> and they would, they would weigh them. There's uh, the stories about the Derby. I could I could burn up uh, you know, a week's worth of shows, uh -huh. but the guy that won, I don't know if I don't know if he ended up winning. I think he did. He put gra you know what graphite? Mm -hmm. Graphite is you know is, is sure. like he covered his body. With, <laughs> he felt that that would reduce uh -huh. the wind resistance uh, <laughs> as he was going down. <laughs> And then we'll, Might have worked, huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap up. We'll wrap up the. the you know, we're trying uh, to get graphite off of you. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sure, right. Yeah. I, I imagine Mom mm -hmm. scrubbed on that boy for uh -huh. a long time. But we'll we'll wrap up with an interesting Derby story and what really kind of killed the Derby for a long time. And there was a there was a cheating scandal uh -huh. in the 70s. Fella whose uncle was very rich and manufactured skis out in Colorado decided his, his nephew was gonna win the derby race. And he had streamlined the car and did all these different things. And the fella, the young boy, made it through the semifinals. Mm -hmm. And of course the parents are there. Parents are, are, you know, the parents are good things and bad things when it comes to children's hobbies and oh, toys yeah. and competition. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and the parents the were there and they were watching this car because it obviously had some money spent on it. And, <clears throat> they were noticing that his time was slowing down. Now, all it is is you're going in a straight line, so mm -hmm. it's not the motor's running bad or the motor's running good. His time was slowing down, but he was still whipping everybody, right? He got to the finals. His time was slower in the finals than it was in the, in the semis, right? But he still beat the other young fella for the championship. Mm -hmm. And the parents said, something's up, something's going on. And, and the, uh, unbelievable story. They discovered that the uncle had put a battery in the back of the car. Uh -huh. He put a micro switch behind the helmet, <laughs> and there was an electromagnet on the front of the car uh -huh. that latched on to the starting gate. And when the, the way they started the cars, they would drop the metal gate. That would propel the car forward. The battery was going dead and it didn't have as much of a grip on that gate. Like obviously all illegal, totally illegal. Yeah. Sure. But but that's what would propel the car. And he won the he won the race and they said, something's going on here. And they took it to the dirigible building. That's where, Derby Downs is next to the big dirigible building right. in Akron. They took it to the dirigible building and they x-rayed it. <laughs> they said something's happening. Uh -huh. here and there was a battery. <laughs> and the switch, the kid uh -huh. would, what he would do is he'd put his head back and that would activate the battery, clamp onto the starting gate, boom. That's a very cool story. That is really neat. I know the man in Akron is uh -huh. a big time derby collector. He's got the car. Uh -huh. was, there, was there any money involved in this? 
Oh, oh I'm sure there were side bets all day long. I mean, like, for, like for the kid. Well, well, they would uh, they would win a scholarship. Uh huh. Uh, I, I believe in the in the earlier days it was a college scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean there was something uh, f for them. There's a lot of uh, you know, trophies, of course, mm -hmm. but they'd have jackets and and different things that the kids that went to the All American. Uh, here's a tip for those of you that might come across a derby car. If you find a derby car that has fairly amateurish lettering, like mm -hmm. if Rick, if you and I lettered in a Rick's car shop on mm -hmm. the side, if you find one that has that type of lettering and then you find underneath it, very professionally done, the Youngstown Vindicator. Mm -hmm. The reason, that's an all-American car, mm -hmm. because the newspapers sponsored the local derbies. Mm -hmm. So if you won your local regional derby, the local newspaper paid for your expenses to go to Akron. Big deal if you lived in Youngstown and you went yeah. to Akron, but yeah. a huge deal if you lived in California and went oh, to Akron. Sure. So that's a sign of, a, of an all-American car okay. is amateurish lettering because the kid and his dad would, would letter it, mm -hmm. but then they won and then the, the newspaper would put their logo on it professionally. Mm -hmm. Before we leave here, can you give me a ride in this? <laughs> I, uh, I, this is what I grew up with. What did, what did Steve Martin say? Let's get small, <laughs> Let's Rick. get small. This is what my mom used to put me, push me around town in this thing here. It's almost exactly I, I, like now, it. I'll see, you're throwing, you're throwing me all these, uh, you're, you're teeing it up, uh -huh. and I've got, I've got the stories. These are called tailor tots. Uh -huh. And they were made from after the war up through probably the late 50s. And you know, it was the baby boom. Yeah. I, I grew up in one. I mean, that was bash your teeth on those wooden. Gosh, I, I looked at that and I go, oh my God, I remember my mom. I, you know, I was a little toddler at the time. but. Uh... And these were the upscale versions that had the pontoon fenders oh, yikes. on them. Mm -hmm. They made an economy version that didn't have the fenders. The, uh, the upscale, they have a lock on the back and mom could click it. Mm -hmm. and it would lock the back wheel so it wouldn't roll down the hill. <laughs> the economy <laughs> version, hey, if you're guys. poor, let them run yeah. down the hill, it doesn't matter. But I got, I, I've, I've been buying them, but I got 50 of these uh -huh. at one time. Uh, a, a local car guy, and some of your viewers might know him, Arlie Utzinger. Arlie was a race car driver, uh -huh. Arlie's towing, Utzinger's towing. He came in, he saw I had this old stuff, and he had, I had a pedal car that he wanted. And, and it was a pretty rare car, it was $500 or something. And, and Harley goes, I want that car. I go, well, it's $500. He goes, would you be interested in some st baby strollers? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, I've got some tailor tots. Well, I knew what tailor tots were. Uh -huh. He brought one in and he showed me, he said, I've got 50 of them. <laughs> and he had been buying them up at garage uh -huh. sales. Now, this is great. For those of you that might know Harley, what he would do is he would restore them one at a time and he had a daughter that would fit in them and he would go to the Southern Park Mall on Friday night uh -huh. and push his daughter around in this, <laughs> this stroller uh -huh. and grandma and grandpas that were there going, oh, look, Bobby was in one yeah, of those. Yeah. Would you consider selling this? Mm. Arlie would go, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he would take his daughter out of, uh -huh. out of the tailor tot uh -huh. and go home and restore another one. So he had a showroom of the Southern Park Mall, but yeah, those, that's, that's the tailor tot stories. That's if you great. have one of these at home, if you flip it over, we're not going to do it here because you and I will drop it. Underneath this wooden thing is a circle mm -hmm. and a number, two digits, 51, 52, 53. It'll say J or P. That's the month. The letter is the month and the two digits is the year. Mm -hmm. So you'll find them from 51, 52, 53, and they stamp the See bottom that? That was of them. You 53, can, you, yeah.
Okay, Jer, uh, 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 hold on a second. Your phone's ringing here. Let me see. Hello. Oh, my producer here. It's Greg. Uh, he said we got to wrap it up, Jer. Wrap it up? Yeah, I'm not ready to wrap, wrap it up. up. But wait, we, we, we run, okay, is he running on. out of film in his camera? Yeah, is that what that yeah, is? I guess. He said wrap it up. <laughs> and we can, uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, so All right. He's got other things we to can, do, I guess. We can, do, we can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Jerry, thank you very much for... Uh, showing us your place here and all your memorabilia and all your Well, stuff. I, as I like to say with a smile, I've come out of my shell a little bit and I'm not afraid to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's always fun to have somebody new that hasn't seen the toys. Mm -hmm. and, and I get to share my, uh, my, my collection. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of your viewers, I'm, I'm sure that they might be interested in this stuff. Um, ClassicAutomobilia.com. Mm -hmm. I'm going to announce some hours maybe that will be open. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the Ohio Van and Truck Supply building, but it's not open to the public. You can come peek in the window maybe. But um, we'll have some times as we get closer to Christmas that maybe mm -hmm. we'll, we'll let some people come in and, and take a look and uh, maybe they'll find the uh, Taylor Tots of their of their youth. <laughs> or yes. cars. Yes, yes. Well, I appreciate you yeah. coming. It was great you know, having I, you. I remember this one st uh, sticker my buddy, our buddy Ron Robinstall had on his head on his car. He said, man who uh, guys with the most toys wins. <laughs> and I, we think, met some I think you're going to win this. Uh, I, I, I've seen some other winners, but I take credit. I'll be, I'll be in the top 50. Yes, How's you that? will. Yes, you will. Jerry Dixie, thank you very much for your time and your wife. Thank you very much for everything and, and uh, having us down here today. Great. Thanks okay. for coming. I'm glad you appreciate it. For Armstrong Street Scene, I'm Rick Guerrera. I'll see you down the road. Mm -hmm.